Hey everyone, this is graphic designer Roberto Blake, and today I'm going to be talking about digital print production. Now, if you're looking to become a graphic designer or you're already working as a graphic designer, you may or may not be familiar with the concept of digital print production. Digital print production is a specific discipline of the graphic design field that, just like it sounds, relates to print. When you have to bring um, files together for print and send them out to a print shop, there's a lot of preparation that goes into that and it's very different and specific depending on the type of print media that's available or the requirements. Doing print production for a billboard is very different than doing print production for a newspaper, for example, or for a business card, or for a print for a magazine. There's just all these different things that you have to take into account and it is a very specific and um, specialized knowledge set that you have to have going into it. It's also very different from graphic design in the fact that it's more technical and mechanical than it is creative. Not all graphic designers are uh, print production artists, even if they are print designers. A lot of times a graphic designer's work will go to what's called an in-house production team when they're working for a client or a studio um, or in different various types of industries. And that team of people will be responsible for translating the creative work that was done into the appropriate and necessary formats and file reproductions to go out to print, um, to be resized, etc. Print designers have to work with things called uh, mechanicals or um, the long version of that, which is mechanical specifications. And what these are are a specific set of instructions that include things like the actual dimensions of the final file, the DPI, which refers to the dots per inch or quote unquote the print quality. Um, sometimes it'll be things like ink density restrictions, which has to do with how much actual ink is being used by the printing press and what its limitations are, which actually goes back to affecting the amount of um, colors and saturation in the original creative work. So again, it's extremely technical and it's more involved than actually doing the design and the creative process, and it's more than layout. A lot of people think that digital print production just means, oh, well, you're a print designer, you do layout and you do typography. It actually has very little to do with that. Um, but it does involve making sure that things like the colors are set appropriately. Print is CMYK, and you can't just go into Photoshop and convert a file to CMYK and that be the end of it in most cases. You have to adjust things like the tonal values and saturation because things that are on a digital screen are additive. They have backlight. White is being used and it's being filled in, whereas print is subtractive. You're actually removing white from the actual paper medium instead of adding to it. So it's very different. Um, and those are things that you really have to consider. Screen resolutions are usually 72 DPI or PPI. Uh, with retina, they're considerably more. Traditionally, print is um, 150, 300, or 600, depending on the type of print medium. Um, things like newspaper are sometimes between 120 and 150 DPI, and they'll have what's called um, an ink color density, which means that the combined amount of um, ink on the paper can't exceed a certain threshold, which means that out of the four colors that you have in CMYK, which are cyan, magenta, yellow, and process black as the key, can't add up in total past a certain value. So that means that any um, color combinations that you make have to have those limitations and restrictions in mind. And that's just one specific thing about um, digital print production, and that's usually specific to um, newspapers and magazines. You usually don't deal with um, ink color density um, limitations outside of that medium, but you can end up with that specification. So it's something you have to keep in mind, and it's something most graphic designers don't even know about. And that's part of why I wanted to do this video. If you plan on going into something like advertising or editorial or fashion, you're going to be working with different types of print media. And in working with those different types of print media, you really have to have a grasp not only of very basic general things like packaging files in InDesign and Quark and doing layout and doing typography. You have to really understand what the technical requirements are and understand what the um, digital print process is really all about. 
And if you don't have a background in that or it wasn't covered extensively in your schooling or if you forewent a graphic design education, um, it can be really challenging and you can end up creating files that people can't use or that have problems and that can cost sometimes extra hundreds or thousands of dollars um, if mistakes are made. So you really can't afford not to understand this if you plan on going into an industry that really is very print centric. When you're dealing with uh, print files for digital print production, you usually don't, won't just drop a JPEG in to um, InDesign or Quark and say, oh, here it is, and that's the photographic part of this, et cetera, et cetera. One of the best types of files to use for your um, photos or artwork when working in digital um, print production is actually a TIFF file. Um, so you can use an uncompressed um, or very minimally compressed version of the artwork so that you don't have a loss of quality or detail and you retain a high bit depth. Usually JPEGs are reduced to um, eight bits. They've lost a lot of the key information, um, et cetera. But when you take something like a raw photograph and you save it as a TIFF, you can choose to have it uncompressed and you can use that in your artwork for this design instead and it'll be a much higher overall quality. Also, TIFFs are easier to um, manipulate and translate in terms of the CMYK color workflow. Understanding things like color swatches, the difference between um, regular CMYK colors, spot colors, and the Pantone um, color matching library are all things that are very important to understand in digital print production if you're going to get things right. If you um, don't understand the difference between spot color, CMYK, and Pantone, you can end up costing your client hundreds of dollars depending on how they choose to get this printed. So it's extremely important to remember that and to learn these things. You can't just open up Photoshop or InDesign one day and decide that you're a print designer. There's really a lot of specialized information out there that you have to get beforehand. So I really hope you guys will look into that. I'll try and do more videos on specific aspects of digital print production and print design as I have a chance. If you want to see more videos like this, you can definitely let me know in the comments below. Anyway, that's it for this video. Like the video if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you guys on the next video. Thanks for watching.